Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the AJS 37 Vigan for DCS World. I'm your host Led, and in today's chapter we'll be covering the PS37A radar. This tutorial series is built around a foundational learning concept, teaching you the basics and focusing on systems as needed, which, by the end of the series, will cover everything you need to know. This is to reduce drinking from the fire hose. Additionally, today's lesson has been organized into chapters, so you can seek out the part you need to brush up on or follow through the whole chapter to learn the system. The PS-37A radar is a ground mapping radar designed for use in ground and naval attacks as well as in navigation, particularly in poor visibility. The primary interface through which the pilot interacts with the PS-37 is the central indicator radar display, which through the course of this tutorial will generally be referred to as the radar display or central indicator. The PS-37 data is shown unfiltered on the display, and unlike radar outputs commonly found in fighters, the pilot does not lock onto a target, which should not be confused with setting a fix. The radar has a range of approximately 120 kilometers, though the effectiveness of the radar, particularly at maximum range, is directly correlated to the altitude and terrain. The PS-37A is one of three radar sets on the Vigan. In today's tutorial, we'll be using the central indicator, the radar control panel, the radar control stick, and the CI brightness control. The central indicator will automatically turn on in certain master modes and can otherwise be turned on with the radar mode selector switch. The PS-37A can operate in two modes, a narrow and wide program, which also correlate to which scope the return is displayed in. The most common mode is the wide program, A1 mode, which displays the returns in a plan polar indication. This mode provides the pilot with a relatively easy to interpret image of the ground ahead. The narrow program, A2 mode, provides a B-scope view of the returns and will generally yield the most specific results. To select which mode and display is used, the radar mode selector switch is located on top of the radar stick. This control should be bound. There is a third option on the control for A0, which will turn off the CI when allowed. Adjacent and towards the pilot on the radar control stick is the radar scan range selector, which allows the pilot to change the visible range of the display in a series of doubled values, from 15 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 60 kilometers, and the maximum 120 kilometers. This ideally should be bound. On the front of the radar control stick is the radar fixed trigger. The real Vigan uses a two-stage trigger here. However, you can bind these controls to separate inputs as desired, as most people don't have a second stick in their home setup. The three stages of this trigger are the neutral, T0, T1 at the first detent, and TV at the second detent. All three of these must be bound. The stick itself is an input, so you will need to set one as well in order to move the radar display cursor. On the head of the stick is also located the terrain avoidance selector button, which is used to put the radar into TA mode, which we'll be covering shortly. This should be mount. In front and outboard of the stick base is the radar marker potentiometer, which controls the gain or contrast of the radar display. Most HOTAS bases include a single potentiometer. This is the control I would use it for. Since there is no data translation on returns, your ability to rapidly adjust the contrast to make out various features and find targets is of the utmost value. You cannot look at the display and click scroll the control in the sim simultaneously. At the back of the stick is the radar antenna elevation dial. The remaining controls can be left unbound as clicking them in the cockpit is easy and will not disrupt your ability to use the system. At the base of the stick is the Radar Memory Mode button, which will freeze the radar image on the display, ideally bound, but not the end of the world if not. Outboard of the stick on the panel is the Anti-Jamming Filter Mode Selector. Going up is the Passive Radar Mode Selector, Radar Pulse Length Selector, Receiver Processing Mode Selector, or LIN Log Switch, and the Radar Altimeter Signal Modulation Selector. Located near your left hip is the radar brightness control, which adjusts the brightness of the radar display. Located below the central indicator display on the left side panel is the CI filter. 
there are three primary modes for the PS-37 radar, A0, A1, and A2. A0 is the off position. The CI will be off, and the PS-37 will not emit signals, which is ideal if you're trying to maintain a specific emissions condition. We'll first look at the PPI, A1 mode, indications. Various versions of these indications will appear depending on master mode selection, so the absence of some indications is normal. Imposed over the display in both modes are a few elements from the HUD. You have an artificial horizon, as well as the dual altitude reference bar, which includes an indication of altitude and the 100 meter reference bar. These elements are to help you fly while remaining heads down, and we'll cover their use in a later tutorial. Next is the B-scope. On the PPI, returns closer to the aircraft end up jammed into the smaller space near the receiver on the output. The B-scope fixes this by plotting the returns like a conventional graph on graph paper. As you can see in our graphic, on the PPI, returns closer to us get jumbled when plotted. However, on the B-scope, it plots them uniformly throughout the plot, providing a very clear indication of the returns closer to the receiver. In the A2 mode, which uses the B-scope, it is much easier to pinpoint objects close to the aircraft. In this mode, the scan arc is 64 degrees, half of the 123 degree arc of the A1 mode, hence the term narrow mode, or scope. The search speed is also slower. The A2 mode is useful in two types of use, either during navigation with zero visibility using the terrain avoidance mode, or in similar visibility using the PS-37 to pinpoint targets for radar release. It might seem obvious, but it's important to note that the return is an unfiltered graphing of the returns and not the image our brains interpret from the display. Various objects reflect radar energy back to the receiver in different amounts, which is what allows us to plot those returns into useful information. Trees absorb and reflect radio waves back differently than grass, which is radically different than, say, a metal tank or concrete building. At the same time, objects that are closer to us reflect more energy back than objects further away. And importantly, objects can mask things by blocking all of the signal or their returns. Understanding this, we can utilize various plotting equations to generate a different view of the same results. We do this with the LinLog or Receiver Processing Mode switch. By default, the display shows us the logarithmic mode, which shows a much wider range of return values, letting us make out a lot of details such as different terrain types and elevations. By switching to linear mode, we get very high contrast, which can be useful if we need to eliminate clutter and determine the returns quickly, such as locating targets in the air or making sure we don't run into a mountain. Linear mode will also amplify much quieter returns, say a small BDRM in a cornfield, for example. We can further fine tune these results with the marker gain knob. The pulse length selector switch can also be used to make slight adjustments to the returns by changing the length of the pulse from the transmitter receiver. At the base of the stick is the radar elevation dial, which allows you to adjust the elevation of the PS37 receiver. Keep in mind that the CK-37 will automatically adjust the elevation depending on the master mode and weapon settings, so you only need to adjust this if you're deviating from normal use cases. There is a center detent that will help return the set to the default position. When flying in zero visibility, you can place the PS-37 into terrain avoidance mode, which will snap the antenna elevation to zero degrees and display returns only at the same altitude as the aircraft. While many pilots prefer using the PPI on the display, the B-scope will provide the clearest navigational assistance because, as we covered earlier, the returns nearest to you are more clearly displayed. Regardless of the mode you choose, the white, negative space is clear of returns, while the black are returns, so stay in the white. When flying in B-scope, the display will show 1,000 meters to 10 kilometers ahead of the aircraft. You can change between PPI and B-scope, A1 and A2, while in the terrain avoidance mode. To disengage terrain avoidance mode, switch to A0, which will clear the mode. The display can also operate in a memory mode, which pauses the radar and will hold the image on the display for about 30 seconds. In addition to A0, which the PS-37 remains off, there's also the ability to use the PS-37A in a passive setting where the set will not transmit but will receive. Set to A0, switch passive span switch to till. This will plot received radar energy onto the CI plot without emitting signals of your own. 
We won't cover the anti-jamming filter mode today, however, adjusting this dial in practice will potentially bypass jamming from targets, allowing you better access to set target coordinates with the radar while being jammed by them. The land C switch doesn't affect the PS37. Rather, it's used for the Doppler radar on the wing, which is used for wind data and targeting and navigation by the CK37. You should set this depending on your feet wet, feet dry condition. There is a key bind that can be used for a night filter on the central indicator. If you need your eyes tuned for night, this is fantastic. I, however, love that green glow in the cockpit at night, and I use the MVGs despite their low quality anyways. In the next tutorial, we'll be covering navigation, which is its own major can of worms. However, navigation in the Vigan relies heavily on the PS37, and one of the most critical elements of that is navigational fixing. While the Vigan does have TerraNav to aid you in staying on course, checking your navigation points and fixing them as needed is critical to arriving where you want to go and also getting a good number of weapons onto their targets. Regardless of the type of waypoint or navigational mode, the fixing process is always the same. In master mode nav or spa, your waypoint will appear on the display as a white circle. The scale of the circle doesn't change with range, so when looking at 120 kilometers, your waypoint circle covers a lot of area. Typically, you will perform a navigational fix inside of 15 kilometers, though if you're way off, you can make adjustments in higher range sets. The circle will only appear for the active waypoint, to change a future waypoint, you must select it on the waypoint panel. Remember that these functions are typically on a two-stage trigger. However, the key binds are universal, T0, T1, TV. To move the white circle, activate T1, which would be a half press and hold on the radar trigger. In the T1 mode, a crosshair will appear inside of the circle. If you see this crosshair, you know T1 is active. You can also tell T1 is active because the waypoint indicator will switch to an E followed by the waypoint number. You can now move the crosshair with the radar stick, using whatever you've bound to move it. Once you place the crosshairs on the location that the waypoint should be, activate TV. This would be a full press of the radar trigger. The white circle will now move to that location and the crosshair will disappear. You've now returned to T0, which is the default operating mode. If you've activated T1 and wish to cancel, activate T0. In real life, you'd just release the trigger and that would set T0. I've found that having these as separate keys can be handy because I don't have to hold T1 to remain active while I make the fix. It's handy to understand though that this is a two-stage trigger in real life because that makes understanding how these modes are activated and deactivated logical. The other time we need to make changes on the indicator is when using the PS37 to locate targets. When doing a navigational fix, we're fine-tuning the exact position of the waypoints to fly our route. The exact same process is used for fixing targets at the PS37. You will need to select the target or M waypoint on the waypoint panel and have this as an active waypoint to make the fix on the display. The process is identical. Activate T1, slew the crosshair, and then TV to fix. Keep in mind that an M waypoint fix will only move that waypoint while fixing a navigational B waypoint you'll move the entire flight path. We'll cover those details in greater depth in the next tutorial. The central indicator will also, in certain weapons modes like radar release, give you a crosshair to use. We will be covering that during that tutorial section. Certain waypoints are not moved with the central indicator. When you change the master mode for landing, you'll get different symbology and waypoint indications. To change these, you will need to change the airfield codes on the CK-37 as those are fixed to the locations the CK-37 believes them to be. If they're off, you need to fix a different navigational waypoint to correct the entire flight path. Those details are again in a different tutorial. However, today, you should understand landing mode waypoints are not moved by fixing. The PS-37 can be used for air-to-air -air purposes, contrary to popular belief. That said, it's rather rudimentary and complements the Vigan's paltry air weaponry. It can help you find targets who may think you can't see them on radar, but you can't lock targets or fight BVR. In either A1 or A2 modes, set the weapon selector to RB05, ACAN, or IRRB. These are the only weapon modes you can use for air-to-air -air combat anyhow. In later tutorials, we'll cover how to use them. Today, we'll cover using the radar with them. When set to these modes, 
The radar will slew to one and a half degrees over the horizon. You can adjust the height with the elevation knob. You're not going to detect smaller aircraft, however, larger targets show up quite easily. You can't lock the targets, but you can determine their range and bearing. The A-10 is a gun with a plane built around it, and in a way, the AJS-37 is the PS-37A with a plane built around it. One of three radars on the Viggen, the PS-37 is key to her lethality to ground targets. With this radar, you can fly in any weather, any time of day, locate the target, and release on it further, faster, and more accurately than other systems of the era. Understanding the PS-37 is key to utilizing many of the important features of the AJS-37 Viggen. With this understanding, the navigation and landing chapters of our tutorial will be much easier to understand and execute. Our next tutorial is of course going to be navigation followed by landing in the Viggen. The LitNap Gaming Discord is a great source of information if you need help, as well as the official Heat Blur Discord, which has a dedicated AJS-37 section filled with pilots who know the module inside and out. You'll find me there too. You can always navigate back to this tutorial if you ever need to review this chapter, share this series with your friends learning this awesome module, like and subscribe if you haven't, and I can't wait to catch you all next time.